Hello everyone, I'm Paul Everett, Python and Web Developer Advocate at JetBrains. I'm doing the narration video for this video by Mukul Montosh. Today we're going to have a demo session of the Kubernetes plugin provided by JetBrains. For this demo, we're going to use the IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate 2022.1 release. Make sure before moving ahead you have Docker, Desktop, or Minikube already set up on your machine. Let's first install the Kubernetes plugin. Go to File, Settings, click on the Plugins, and search for Kubernetes. I will click on Install. The plugin has been successfully installed. Coming back to our project root, you can see that this is a Spring Boot starter template, which was created by IntelliJ. Let me show you the bare minimum features which we have added to the application. Under the com.demo.helloworld package, we have three classes. A Java package is a group of similar types of classes, interfaces, and sub-packages. Hello World application is our main class. Hello World controller is responsible for processing incoming REST API requests. Request mapping is the most common and widely used annotation in Spring MVC. It is used to map web requests onto specific handler classes and or handler methods. Get mapping annotation maps HTTP GET requests onto specific handler methods. The GET mapping annotation is a specialized version of request mapping annotation. As you can see, we've defined three routes over here. The base route is going to return hello from Spring Boot. The slash home route will return JetBrains. The slash student route will return John Beatles as first name and last name. The data is being retrieved from the student information class, where we perform setter and getter operations. Moving ahead, we've already created the Docker file and the respective image is already hosted in Docker Hub. We're using the Alpine flavor of JDK 17. Next, we're copying the artifacts and finally declaring the entry point, which points to the path of the hello world jar file. You must be wondering where this jar file popped out and how we can create a jar archive. Let me show you the process. Click on File, Project Structure. Click on Artifacts under Project Settings. Click on the plus, choose jar, and then from modules with dependencies. The module is going to be hello world. I will choose the main class, which is the hello world application. I'll click on OK. Now we are set, I will apply the changes. Now let's build the artifact. I click on build and then build artifacts. Under Action, I will choose Build. You can see in the bottom the build process is going on. It will take a few seconds to complete. The build is complete and the Hello World jar file is stored under the out directory. That is out artifacts, hello world under jar, and then hello world.jar. So if you've observed previously in the Docker file the path from where the artifact is being copied, this is the bare minimum setup we have done. Now let's move on and deploy the application using the Kubernetes plugin. Let me first show you the services tool window where we will be monitoring our Kubernetes resources. Click on View, Tool Windows, Services. The shortcut for a Windows Mac is Alt-8. As you can see the services window, you can see it showing up the Docker desktop which is installed on my machine. It's been auto-detected. I'll come back in a while and explain more, but let's now move back and start creating our manifest files. I'm going to first create a directory called k8s for kates. I'll create a ns.yml yaml file where we're gonna create a namespace. Namespaces provide a mechanism for isolating groups of resources within a single cluster. As you know, we've already installed the plugin. You just need to press the button K. As soon as I press the button, you can observe we're getting a list of predefined templates 
for pod, service, deployment, config map, and generic resource. The good part is that you can even customize and create more templates based on your requirements. Let me show you quickly how you can do that. Under File, Settings, Editor, Live Templates. Under Kubernetes, there are five templates to find. You can define more based on your choice. This gives you more flexibility. Coming back, I'm going to create a generic resource. API version will be v1, kind is going to be namespace, and metadata will be spring-boot. Next, I'm going to click on this green icon with the arrows pointing in the outward direction. This will apply the changes. You can see the namespace was successfully created. Under the Services tool window, you can easily switch the namespace. I will right click on Docker Desktop. Click on Namespace and choose Spring Boot. Now the context is pointing to the Spring Boot namespace. Next, I'm going to create the deployment.yml file. Deployments can scale the number of replica pods and enable rollout of updated code in a controlled manner or roll back to an earlier deployment version if necessary. The deployment template was generated. Let me provide the metadata and image information. I'll be running two replicas of our Spring Boot app. I'll provide the image name, which I have already pushed to Docker Hub. We need to define our port. The container port is going to be 8080. As you can see after hovering over here, I'm getting a small help information which explains exactly what is the image pool policy. It also shows the possible values that are accepted. This is really good for providing bite-sized information. Now let's move on and create the deployment. Our deployment is now created. Now we will create the Kubernetes service, which is going to provide a unique IP address. This address is tied to the lifespan of the service and will not change while the service is alive. Similarly, I press K and select the service. I'll provide metadata information as spring-boot-service. Port and target port will be set to 8080. Node port will be set to 30009. A node port exposes the service on a static port on the node IP address. Now we will create our service. Our service is now created. Let me refresh. I expand workloads and click on pods. You can see there are two pods running. There are lots of things you can check like stateful sets, daemon sets, or even if you are running periodic jobs like cron jobs. Under configuration, you can check config maps, roles, secrets, etc. We can even check the underlying storage volumes, basically the persistent volume, volume claims, and storage classes like AWS Elastic Block Store, Azure Disk, or GCE Persistent Disk, for Google Cloud. Also, there's a section for custom resources. Custom resources are extensions of the Kubernetes API. CRD allows you to define custom resources. We can also check the events, what was happening in the background, scheduling, created, killed, scaling replica set, etc. All the events are being captured. Coming back to our pods, I'll do a right click on the name of the pod and it's going to show a list of items. We can describe the resource, follow or download log, run shell, open console, and even can do port forwarding. That's really amazing. Now, let me first see what's coming up in describe resource. Describe is going to basically fetch detailed information about our pod. It's also helpful for debugging when the pod is in a pending state. You can observe the events, the spring boot image is getting pulled and then after creating and starting the container. Apart from that, you can follow the logs. This looks good. 
You can even download the logs as well for future reference. Coming back under Network, you can check Services and Ingress. Ingress exposes HTTP and HTTPS routes from outside the cluster to services within the cluster. For our demo, we're just a plain node port service, which has been exposed on port 30009. Let me check in the browser. Okay, the page is not loading. Looks like there is a configuration mismatch. Let me fix it quickly. Okay, got it. The selector needs to be Spring Boot Deployment instead of Spring Boot Service. Let me apply the changes. Great, now it's working perfectly fine. We're getting the response, hello from Spring Boot. Let me try the remaining two routes. We got the JSON response containing the first name and last name as John Beatles. It's really great that the Kubernetes plugin from JetBrains is doing all the heavy lifting instead of us typing on the command line manually in the terminal. This plugin is not only helpful for local development, it also helps us connect with the external Kubernetes clusters, which may be running on-premises or in the cloud. I'll right-click on Docker Desktop, go to More, and click on Show Settings. You can see the Kubernetes Settings window. You can observe under Tool Locations the path to kubectl executable and Helm executable. This also helps you in writing Helm charts. There are lots of things you can do over here like defining the namespaces, mentioning where to download the pod logs, and defining the command to run in a shell inside the container. Coming to the configuration, you can observe the path is now pointing to the config of our Docker desktop basically the local cube configuration. So I'm gonna change this and provide the config file of our EKS cluster. EKS stands for Elastic Kubernetes Service, a managed Kubernetes service offered by AWS. I will choose the Spring Boot Cluster config file. Now we can easily manage our resources running in the EKS cluster. Currently, there are no pods or services running. So let's do one thing. We will deploy the same Spring Boot application again, but this time it will be directly in the AWS platform. I'll create the namespace first. You can see while hovering over the green arrow icon, the context is going to be applied in the EKS cluster. Namespace was created. Next, I will create the deployment. Next, we'll create a service. This service is going to be different because we will be exposing it through the load balancer. Port and target port will be 8080. Type is going to be a load balancer. All done, let's apply the changes. Now I will switch the namespace to Spring Boot. You can see two pods are running smoothly. Coming back to services, under the network section, the Spring Boot service is exposing the endpoint. Let me try to get more information. I'll do a right click on the Spring Boot service and click on Describe Resource. You can see on line number 11, it exposes the Elastic Load Balancer endpoint, and it's running on port 8080. I'll copy the URL and check in the browser. And you can see we got the response, hello from Spring Boot. Let me quickly check the remaining routes. Great, this is really amazing. We managed to deploy the application in the cloud just through the plugin. Make sure to use this plugin to its fullest potential to enhance your productivity. This was a really great experience working with the Kubernetes plugin.